All right, so I didn't hear any objections, so that's fine. So let me share my screen for just a minute. I just have a couple of slides uh, to, to share. Um, do, you, do you see that? Digital Media Collective Developing Video Lectures. What, uh, what I'd like to propose that we do, this is for, for the Mixed Media Collective more down the road, more broadly, starting now, not down the road, meaning we, we're not ready to do it. We're ready to start today. Uh, provide Moema, our media uh, uh, um, coordinator, who's at Ilosavik College, is available to provide technical support and training in developing videos. So, you know, it doesn't take a, it's not rocket science. You know, you can create a, a, a video presentation recorded, recording off of PowerPoint and have it follow, have your recording follow the PowerPoint slides. And that's pretty straightforward, but you can do a lot more than that with, uh, with different media tools. And Moema is available to help you do that. Um, and so, Everybody is sta is standing up their online programming, you know, like over this summer and and well started last spring, over the summer and then continuing into the fall. If you have any uh, interest okay. in working up a, a video, you know, a, 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 a maybe a, a little that? bit more jazzed up video with animations, with uh, you know, with different uh, video incorporated in your lecture. Moema is willing, willing to help you work on that. And our longer term goal no. is it's not just Moema, but that we have a whole team and ideally a team of students from your colleges helping Moema and you with your video projects. Al, perhaps uh, we could ask everyone who isn't speaking to mute their mic because I think there's a lot there's of feedback or that's the, the feedback we're getting that there is feedback. Actually, yeah, that's right. If, could you all do that? M mute yourselves if you're, uh, uh, yeah. And I guess, yeah, good, thank you. I think that gets everybody. Are you still hearing some feedback there? Okay. Okay, yeah, so uh, Moema is available to provide uh, training and technical support. And we're planning to grow the team. Right now, I keep referring to Moema as our trainer, uh, uh, our, uh, our, our trainer, and she is, but we, we're, we're planning to recruit students who are interested in, in developing their, their digital media skills to be part of this team of students, uh, of the, support, the support team that works with, uh, with Moema to help you all on your projects. So, um, so starting today, if you have a video project, if you want to create some, uh, uh, some lectures for any one of your classes, if you want to create a series of lectures, just one lecture, uh, you can start off by recording, uh, recording uh, that lecture, sharing it with Moema, and she can and have a conversation with her. And she can uh, tweak it up. She can add more. Uh, uh, of content to it, however you like, uh, whatever you need. But the idea of working with Moema, here is, here's where there's a little bit of a hitch. It's free, we're not asking you guys to pay for her support, but we would like you to agree to allow us to share your videos, to make them available more broadly to, with other faculty at tribal colleges. We're just talking about tribal colleges. The idea being there, we've got you know hundreds of faculty developing their online course materials, many of them offering, uh, creating uh, materials for the same class, uh, for the same course, for the same content. So the more we can share, the easier it is collectively for us, for everybody to, to stand up a course or to, to improve a course, make it easier for students to access and use the content, you know, all, all of the above as a collective, which is kind of in the, in the name of this project, the Mixed Media Collective. Um, so, so Moema and ed eventually others will help with, can help with editing, adding visual content, um, et cetera, making it as, as high quality and ideally relatively short video as possible. You know, I, I like the idea of 
learning objects. You know, so a lecture, you know, you think of when you think of a lecture, it could be a, a, a 40 minute uh, presentation. I think the, the, the best practices include shorter videos that cover a specific topic. You can have three or four videos that might cover all the material for one session or for a week. But having them be shorter and, you know, to a, uh, to a specific topic is a more effective way to go. So, so again, the idea of we all collectively uh, contributing to this database of, of, of learning objects, of video, digital media materials that everybody can share, that everybody can incorporate into a course. Um, so we're, we're, um, we're funding or we're supporting students, uh, faculty, under the AQ, the, uh, the Association of College and University Educators, to go through this, I think it's a 10-week or eight-week uh, asynchronous training on creating online uh, courses and delivering online courses. To fast, so that's, that's really important, but to fast track actually standing up the courses, whatever we can do to help with creating the material, creating the, the, um, the online content, the better. So again, that's where I'm seeing this as being a, a synergistic activity. Um, and so f my final point, and I hope this all sounds good to you all, and you know, we're going to keep uh, putting the word out to all the faculty that we're available to help develop this, uh, this online content, uh, the, and not a, encompassing more than just the lectures, is the idea of, of having the colleges set up their own media labs. Um, so a media lab, something uh, higher end than what you can do with your own computer and a, and a, and a camera and the recording uh, uh, application that's, that's resident in your computer. A media lab with higher quality video, higher quality, higher quality audio capability, um, a complete suite of, of media editing uh, software to do whatever you want to create whatever you know, kind of media uh, content or teaching that you want. And just as importantly, that that lab be available to your students um, to use so they can learn the skills, they can help you and other faculty develop content, they can create their own uh, reports for a class, their own presentations, you know, digital presentations, especially in the, um, in the, in the, the era of COVID-19, you know, creating a, a presentation that can be shared uh, virtually. So my, my suggestion, this is just coming from me, it's not official AAC uh, uh, stance, is that using funding that you're all being uh, uh, um, awarded through CARES Act, funding to stand up your online programs, I'd suggest that you work through your respective channels at your institutions to have them have whoever's in charge of the budget incorporate uh, a media lab. And it doesn't have to be an expensive lab. You can get all that you need uh, for under $10,000. Um, you know, computers, higher end uh, monitors, high resolution monitors, the software, uh, the cameras, the-, the, the um, I'm in. What's that? Um, uh, the cameras, hopefully everybody's mute, uh, muted. All that to, that you can use for your um, for your online courses, and your students can use for their media projects. We're under ten thousand uh, bucks, and Moema has kind of provided, has developed a a, a budget, you know, a, a budget budget justification that specs out what that media I, would look like. Excuse so that's me. A, it's a little commercial on my side, on, for my part. That you know, I, the colleges, the tribal colleges are getting a fair amount of funding through. Um, um, no, there's no meat in it. CARES Act, some more than others, but certainly most, if not all. That of these, does have meat in it. Oh, so, yeah, uh, most or all of you uh, have the uh, would be able to incorporate a, a ten thousand uh, dollar purchase justified because it helps stand up your online program. So I, I totally recommend that. Um, anyway, how does all that sound to you? Um, again, 
our topic today was uh, video, uh, 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 helping to create video lectures. And I'll ask Moima to provide a few pointers in there. And she'll clarify what she can provide you guys in terms of support, uh, technical support. But my overall message of, uh, of think about us as a, as a resource for you to develop whatever content you want as you are developing or standing up your online courses. Um, video lectures is certainly a, the place to start and that's why we're talking about it today. But learning objects more generally, you know, the whole range of, of ways that you can convey um, uh, a content that's part of a course, we'd like to help you uh, accomplish using digital media tools and training and support from, from, from this project. And Al, perhaps we can add that um, while we will begin with uh, presentation materials and lectures and things of that nature, we hope to also then transition into interactive uh, content. So ways in which students are not just receiving content, but are also contributing to content and can interact in a number of ways, uh, including uh, we'll be exploring gaming, we'll be exploring um, XR, meaning augmented and uh, extended reality uh, ways of doing quizzes and formative assessment, uh, ways where students can be organized into groups to do group work and experiential learning, uh, et cetera. So we're, we're hoping to go through the whole range of, of different uh, media types that are used in instruction and also to uh, look at how we can create content for multi-perspectival textbooks. So this project is related to another project supported by the uh, University of Minnesota and the Open Textbook Network and the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, where we want to add uh, the missing and additional perspectives to existing textbooks. Yeah, thank you, Yuta. That's exactly right. This, this, uh, the idea of helping develop video lectures is really just a, a foot in the door kind of a activity. Um, there's a whole universe of digital, uh, uh, digital media applications that we'd love to explore with you and your students, especially that's right with the, with your students. And again, that's the idea where a, a, a media lab would provide a, a place where uh, you and your students can, can get engaged in these, in these different uh, project opportunities. You know, uh, I understand that, uh, oh, uh, Red Lake College, I believe is, is, Experimenting, experimenting with uh, with virtual reality headsets being used to deliver uh, courses. Um, that's really early in the evolution of the technology, I think. But that's an example of the kinds of things that we love to support. You know, creating uh, ways of doing teaching and learning that are available now. If we just you know explore, if we investigate, we try and be open to creative ideas. And that's where I, I think of the students as being that, that, uh, that wellspring of really interesting ideas uh, and creative ideas if we give them the, the opportunity. Um, anybody else? Does anybody have a question or a comment or, or, uh, or anything? Um, Al, could you have Moima introduce herself briefly and tell her what she does and what she can do? Because some people might be new joining in and they're they might not know. Yeah, well, actually, the next the next thing that I wanted to do is ask Moema to uh, a introduce herself and then b talk a bit about the resources she can provide to the faculty, to, to you and all the tribal college faculty in developing, you know, digital video, uh, video lectures and and beyond. So Moema, if you're if you're uh, if you're out there, I don't. I don't see the whole list of participants. I saw you there. Before. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well done. Um, hi, hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. 
Hi, everybody. So, yeah, it's uh, like I'll said, I'm Moema Uman. I work at the Idizagvi College as uh, the media coordinator, and I also teach film there. I work a lot with faculty uh, and students creating uh, video content for uh, instructional videos so they can use um in their in the classrooms or send to uh villages around uh that because we have a lot uh of students that are online but also students that um are in different villages so they can just send um through a drive or however uh works better for each village um yeah so and i've been working with film and art and technology for uh, a long time and creating a lot lots of materials that will show a little bit of it as we go through some ideas that um, I put together uh, to talk about today. Um, what I thought to do for today was just from our talks uh, from the past uh, workshops this week, I've been seeing that a lot of people are asking uh, how to go over um, classes and uh, developing content uh, for online classes was a big uh, ask. So I just very quickly put some uh, tips together uh, for today and um, then afterwards would be nice to have a talk because um, it's hard to to put something like this together without knowing uh, the level of it of everybody like I don't know if you're already doing this or not or if you're not doing it all so that's why uh, it's good that um, later on we can have this discussion and see how we can keep going forward like I was saying it's good to have the feedback so we can, as we will see, this is a space that we're building together um, for the needs of everybody. Uh, so I will, um, oh, I have a question here about the email. There is an email that I will show to you here. Uh, if anybody have questions directly to me, uh, you'll be able to send it directly to me, it's on the it's on the the, the presentation. I will show you. Um, I actually apologize for my presentation. It's going to be on my Photoshop template because I had a little. Pro I'm I'm with a new computer. I have a little problem with my export thing, but you'll be able to see everything. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen very quickly here. Just one second. Mm. Okay, so you can see it, yeah. so good. Okay, so uh, I separated in a few ways. So um, if you are willing to create your own videos, here's a few tips that uh, are nice and important, I think. Um, it is, I always suggest that no matter what kind of videos are you're making, it's really nice to have a, at least an outline and preferably a storyboard with it because then you can have a visual reference to see not only um, if, uh, not only to see like in, uh, visually how it's looking, but also like if it's been too long, if you have enough uh, references and of course images uh, in, um, in your video and it's really nice if you're recording yourself by yourself there's nobody around you it's nice to have something as a guide i actually found uh this uh template online that i thought was interesting and i can put it uh later on i can put all these links out there uh it's just showing like an example of how you could do just before you film or and then how you can build your lessons to 
record. Uh, this is one example. There's so many ways that you can do it. It's just nice to, to have a visual um, guide as you're doing your, your presentation, uh, your recording your film. Uh, another big tip is always like make it short because uh, the attention after six minutes fall uh, and drops and after nine minutes it's, uh, it shows that it dramatically uh, fall, uh, it's, yeah, goes really down. Students can't, can't stay too long engaged. Uh, another thing is like, uh, make it personable and uh, if possible, show your face. I know a lot of people nowadays are concerned about showing faces online. I totally understand. Um, so if you're concerned about that or you don't feel comfortable in doing that, uh, it's okay. Uh, do a narration, show lots of images, but try to find a way to make it personable, like uh, telling a story that relates to the lesson you, you're giving or uh, show a drawing uh, that represents you that you're gonna always put in your video, something that can link uh, you, like the videos you're making to, to yourself. So every time they shouldn't see that, they're gonna be, uh, they're gonna uh, relate to you. So I have here, uh, sorry, to these examples I just wanna show quickly. Uh, I think I have it open already, but just in case, like, oh, I have to take my headphones out, sorry. This lady, she... Hi, students. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome to your lesson on the states of matter. Your objective today is I can explain the three states of matter. I want you to go ahead and take a moment and write this on your, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, on your little box next to the objective. All right? And you see, like, she's very, like, herself. She's like, do 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 And then she has her face here with, like, you keep going. You see, like, she has, like, her own avatar and all of that. So it's very, she's very herself, like, with her, her way of doing her videos and have, has a reference. But she doesn't show her face, but she has a reference for that. Um, this other one uh, is one that uh, we did at uh, my college with uh, this professor and he, there, there are all kinds of teachers that teach differently. I'm just gonna show a little bit. He likes to make it, he doesn't have a problem being in front of camera and he does more, uh, he has more serious videos, but sometimes he does short ones that are kind of just funnier with humor and he just play around with it, which can work too. Okay, so the stereo is a really essential component to the car. Think about it. You get in the car and you put your stuff away, you put on the seatbelt and all that. And then what's the next thing you do? You turn on the stereo. The music starts playing, right? then the car can start. Seriously. Have you ever started your car without the stereo on? I have. Okay, so it's another example of um, just being personable and being yourself and um, playing around with your lessons and how you are. Uh, another important thing is uh, always test your images to make sure it goes, it works on all sizes of screens, not just a, uh, sometimes we working on a big screen and we think it's gonna work everywhere. And then when you watch on your cell phone, uh, it just, you can read and all of that. Um, if you can make them interactive, um, it's also like there are researches that show that if you manage to make them interactive there are like uh, students they will uh, stay engaged much longer 
uh, there are some softwares and programs that allow you to uh, uh, add quizzes as you go. Um, but you don't need to rely only on other programs if you can't get it or if it takes too much time. You can also use um, activities as you go to doing it during our uh, lecture and I'm gonna show a few examples. Um, the one that shows go, uh, quizzes, this it's at uh, this one, this one I just showed you. Uh, this one, for example. Today we're talking about the art of selfies. Why, you may ask? Well, because almost every single person loves taking selfies. But did you also know that we use skills in English class outside of English class? Gasp, I know, crazy, right? Today's objective is I can make inferences about people and the purpose of selfies. This school year, you'll be making lots and lots of inferences about stories, characters, poems, etc. You make inferences every single day. And then there is a quiz on the side that they shouldn't answer, answers. Um, and this is made through this uh, at puzzle.com and there are other ones that you can do. Um, I'm pretty sure this one is free. Uh, you just need to be part of a, of a educational institution. Uh, but like I said, if you, you can also do it in your uh, video as you go, like this one we also did at the college where I work and the language teacher, she, what we did is as she teaches it, she gives time to the student to repeat the word she's doing it as uh, during the lesson. So it's something like this. Here we have chapter one vocabulary and you can repeat after me. Aka. Aka. Aba. Aba. Then your turn. Ahalik. Ahalik. So you have the visual, uh, uh, the visual of how she moves and articulates the language, the, the word, and then you have a visual uh, of uh, how it's written. Uh, and then you have the time to repeat it after her. So another way to make it interactive, another example. Um, so these are a few tips, of course, uh, there's tones. <laughs> uh, and then how to create the videos. And I think um, I'll explain a lot about it already, but just again, uh, one of the objectives, uh, the main objectives of the IHEC Media Mixed Media Collective is to access the needs and to provide the resources that we need to create this content by providing open source tools. Uh, and we already have a ton, tons on our wiki page, um, providing also the uh, uh, technical assistant. Uh, on the page, there is a place where you can request um, time with me and there is the email there and I will share the email here too. Uh, or yeah, through there or you can just email directly to me. Uh, and eventually we're gonna have like all said more people. Um, and the idea there too is that we can share and collaborate with uh, with each other in projects. So, uh, yeah, not to count just on, on, on the support on our, like everybody, the idea is that we are creating, which is the next point, we are creating this together because we can, we don't know the needs of everybody or, you know, the experiences and ideas. So we want this to be literally built, uh, from the ground up by all of us. So uh, it will help, like literally help with, with what everybody needs and not just with what we think will be helpful, but you know, for everybody. Um, and if you, 
tips if you do not want to uh, create your own videos but use uh, existing videos because also there are so many videos out there already with tons of content uh, not for everything but for some more general um, lessons there is so some tips is uh, um, yes make sure that they follow pretty much the rules as if you were making your own rules, like I mentioned before, that they are shorter, that they are relatable, that the images are large enough to be seen, and if there are inter interactive options. Um, be specific. Uh, you probably you're not gonna find the exactly kind of video that you would if you were teaching it. So it is uh, nice to like give it the specific time to the student, like watch from this time to that time. And actually, uh, they shouldn't might even be more curious and end up watching the whole thing, but it's good also to give that time. I noticed that on YouTube, sometimes if you Google like how to, um, I don't know, um, if it's very specific, like how to copy and paste from uh, this program to the other one or something like that. Some videos that are explaining the whole program, they come already cut from, they just show you that little space in gray, like they show, if you watch from here to here, uh, you can you find just that question you ask. So sometimes, YouTube is doing that for you too. Um, and make sure the material has open access too, because a lot of times if you're already uh, logged in into Google or your Dropbox or something, you find some videos that are available or other material that it's available, but then you send it and the students are not, a, can't log in and then it's just going to be a lot of trouble. Everybody's going to be emailing you how to do it. So to save time, do that. And another tip too is like, if you're already doing lots of, uh, of lecture through um, a platform like Zoom or Skype or whatever you're using, record it because maybe you can use the audio or the video later on to, to create your own your own lesson if you want and use on another semester or another class uh, whenever you want. So yes, these are some of the tips for this now and videos. <laughs> and if you have any questions, let me know. Oh, and the email is like, let me write here. I thought I wrote when I, it's, Uh, M M M C at I hack dot org. This, if you write to this email, it comes directly to me, and it's also on, a, on our wiki page that we're gonna put on on the. Uh, I think it's on the email that you got, and we can put on the chat as well. And I think there's in the chat, there's been a number of questions about uh, different types of videos and content. And oh. we would encourage everybody, I have pasted in there the link to the wiki. We will be putting up the slides that Moima just showed, as well as links to the examples, her email contact. And um, we would encourage everybody to create a, a login for the wiki. And then you can contribute resources as well and share them. And someone asked whether we can share all of the people that are uh, participating here in the workshop. And uh, possibly the best way to do that is for people that are attending to create a, a sign into the wiki and to add your name to the, to the uh, collective member list. And then, um, and, uh, then people can contact everyone through that um, and also share resources and plan projects together and ask questions and get questions answered. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, about how much time do you recommend for developing and creating each lecture? Well, I do have like, for example, it, the, ideally there are some lessons you're not gonna be able to cut too much. Uh, ideally, 
would not go more than 15 minutes. Like if you have a lesson that you normally give in an hour, maybe if you can split it by the themes inside the class, that would be ideal. No, my question is how much time in developing the actual lecture? Because I find what, what I'm doing, because I use Camtasia now, and I'll go over it, and it, it will be an hour that's gone by, and I've still made a really kind of crappy lecture. So the ones that you show looked fantastic, and I'd love to be able to do that, but about how much time is uh, recommended to, I mean, because you could work on it forever. So I'm, I'm just wondering about how much time did each of the, the examples that you showed us, how much time did those professors put into making those videos approximately? Well, again, it depends. What I did that made it much easier for me now was for each professor, I developed a template. Uh, and for each lesson, for example, the lesson uh, on language, I know that I'm doing the whole book for her on the grammar. Right, so now I do the whole book is gonna look like that. So I have it already mount, uh, mounted on my uh, software. And then I go and I put it there and I just, sub she sends me the videos and I just substitute it. Oh, another thing I was gonna show, uh, I don't need to show, I can just say, please, please, please pay attention on the sounds around you because one thing I, uh, told her to use a, a mic. If you don't have a mic, like this mic, like if you have this, it's already great. This is a great tip. You can literally just hang like this on your shoulder and plug it to your computer or your phone, whatever, however you're filming it. It helps so much of the sound. But one problem that we had is that she had a clock on the wall. And there is one or two videos that no matter what I did, I could not take the clock out. So you can hear the tick, tick so loud. Anyway, I, I, I forgot to say about sound. Yeah, sound is very important when you're doing that. But yes, uh, creating a template, you might take, that's what might take you the longer. But once you have that, you just film and you put in there and you, you probably, of course, you're gonna have to change the words and change um, the video you're using and all that, but then it's just cutting what you don't want from the video you recorded or adding images and all of that. And then it will depend on the, on the size of the video you filmed. Um, one, uh, if I can offer another suggestion as well, uh, a good way to start is if you use PowerPoint or Keynote at all, um, then you can prepare the content that you're showing as well as yourself if you wish, but you don't need to. You can record your voice and uh, record the slides and simply go through a, a whole slideshow. And that can then become a video which you can then edit if you want to cut out pieces of it as well. But it's a great way if you are not yet familiar with video editing tools or don't have uh, a good video camera to uh, begin with a, a fairly rudimentary lecture that has additional content in it. Um, there is another uh, source I'm going to put on the uh, uh, on our chat. It's called uh, Explain Everything, uh, and I'm sure there are free ones. I think this one is like for for teachers. I think is a dollar or three dollars a month. But uh, I'm sure there are other ones that are equally good. And as soon as I, as I find it, I'm gonna put on our wiki. That is really good too, because you can literally go through your lesson and draw and all of that. And as you talk, you, uh, you record what you're doing like a board on your computer and you're talking and all of that. You teach your lesson and um, then you can later on just cut or adjust a little bit what you don't want. Um, and, and simple things that uh, sometimes what I find in videos that a lot of people tell me, oh, I, I don't know how to make a video or I just know how to do this. And then they show me and then it's like, 
the videos like has the the video and has some words on it and have um sound good sound and all of that it has all the the um, essentials to to make it to make a perfect video it's just the way then that you put things together and all of that and that's how another thing that we are uh, willing to offer is like how how we can put it together like how you added it together but we also want i see i see a lot of questions um if i'm gonna walk through uh, how to produce a video or suggest equipment and all of that um and this is i can't like if you want because it's hard because i don't know like some people are already making videos some people are not and all of that it would be nice to like email me and we can uh, i can go through and know what you have or what you not don't have and we can go from there so i can help out uh like more specifically uh and about equipment we're gonna have um yes we're gonna have lists in there about suggested uh, equipment that you can use and also yeah if you have it's good to know what you already have because then we can know like what you can do with what you already have and then little things you can get make it without having to get a lot of things Oh, the link, oh, the link you already gave. Um, any other questions or comments, suggestions? So I guess I'm curious to ask the group, how many do you think you might take advantage of Moema's generous offer to help you uh, finalize your 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 video or your project, whatever media project you might be working on. I definitely will. <laughs> That's great. Well, you got to start from somewhere, and one is good. Awesome. I, I, what's that? This is over at Apache College. Yes. Oh, somebody else. Um. Well, one of the things, uh, uh, Al, you just happened to say how many people might take advantage of this opportunity for finalizing a video. I actually think one of the things that might be really valuable is that storyboarding process, which frankly, a lot of people who don't have film production backgrounds, they, they've never done it. So maybe that would be a, a really good space to start where, right. you know, Moema and, and other people can have that conversation. Well, what kinds of videos are you trying to produce? What, what types of lectures? What, what's the outcome? Um, what are what's the content and through that you know I think people like Moema have a lot more of the, the language to to describe you know well this is probably the type of shot that would be really helpful so even before you pick up a camera and start recording anything having mm -hmm. that plan helps you so much in the process of like well, well what is it that I'm trying to produce I think that's what's so hard is a lot of people grab that camera because that's you know or, or the smartphone okay I'm just going to start recording and they record four hours worth of you know lectures and then they go well what do i what do i do with this right i think that's so hard that you just spin your wheels and you end up with material that um uh, the other thing is just a lot of first-time video editors um get really enamored by the the content that they have so they end up trying to cut some things and they cut you know one minute out of four hours worth of stuff well no you actually need to be much more aggressive about that to be able to maintain the attention of your your audience and having an external person might be helpful, not necessarily to do all the hard work of cutting everything out, you know, that's non-essential, but kind of lending an eye and offering suggestions. Well, let's watch the first, whatever, five minutes of this together. And, you know, let me comment on kind of areas that you might suggest, yeah, you know, you could probably lose this whole section and not lose the essence of, of the conversation or the, the lecture, something like that, um, I think, would be where I would imagine, especially um, just having taught some film production classes um, for for total beginners. That's that's really one of the hard tasks is 
um, trying to whittle things down and a lot of people just going in with no plan to start with. So um, that, that would be my suggestion. That, that's a great suggestion. And, and I wonder, should that, so I guess I'm asking the group, should that be or ought that be uh, one of our next uh, workshop topics is storyboarding, putting together your, your outline or your plan for your video or for your lecture or whatever your project is? That could be useful even in the sense, I mean, Moa Mayuri showed some templates for, you know, here's what a science, you know, lecture might use in terms of like kind of visuals. But yeah, having kind of different genres and purposes for, for different kinds of storyboards or ways to, to tell, um, the, or to tell ways to share a concept, I, I think, um, again, kind of increasing the language uh, and the vocabulary for, for everybody who's involved here could be really helpful. Um, even in communicating, I think that's the really hard part. Um, real quick aside, you know, I, some of you guys uh, know that I've been, uh, had been working on the virtual commencement for our school. And so I had hired an external video editor and uh, about a week before everything was uh, live to go, I finally, finally, he finally released a project file for me to look at. And within five minutes, I know, I knew, and I blame myself for this, I knew this is not what I was asking for. So I actually had to can the whole project to start over. Um, and that was my fault for not properly communicating visually through storyboarding or otherwise exactly what I was looking for. So I deliver all this footage to him and what he brought back was not at all consistent with what, you know, the look and feel I wanted. So, and that's a very difficult task, right? That what's up in here, how do we translate that to something that somebody else can really meaningfully help with. And, and I think that's, that's the position I potentially see here is that um, there is a potential for frustration. Hey, I, I sent some stuff over to my Moima, hoping that she could, you know, help me with it. And what I got back isn't what I expected. Well, let's work on that foundation of like, how do we communicate those ideas properly so that we end up, you know, being able to, to generate meaningful content that, that is useful in the long run for everybody. And there was some um, discussion of open education resources in the chat. And that's a, a great way to begin as well. If you don't want to record yourself or create your own content, you can create a mashup of openly uh, licensed content that others that have much greater experience and have done had more resources perhaps and professionals to help them in the video um, have already created. And, and you can pick and choose and create a uh, your own video out of it, uh, a mashup, which adds then your personal touches to weave things together, uh, weave together a, a set of things. And that might be also a, a good way to, um, or an, another introduction, how do you create, how do you cut and paste from existing videos? I agree with what uh, Kenneth was saying. Um, I'm at Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College and we have a multimedia production program we just began um, uh, th this fall. And, uh, and we've been working with our elementary education uh, program and our, our early childhood education, trying to develop some um, lesson plans and how to you know, really focus in and distill for different levels of, of students. Um, as well as then internally now through this COVID process, how to do this for college students and also our faculty. So like um, creating a video for, uh, you know, a creative process is much different than creating a video for an, an educational intention and how to, um, uh, and, and I lecture too. So like I'm in the classroom lecturing about music, that's my field. And I was gonna make my video for my class and uh, and I made this really long video with audio samples and da da da, and I was like, "Why? Well, I just don't know what's going on." Because I was trying to lecture in my usual lecture mode, my face to face mode, and it just doesn't work in video because of the attention span. Because uh, you know you don't read your audience like you can in a classroom. You can't do that with video. You know, there's a whole lot very specific um, things that need to happen in order to create a, a successful video for your class, whatever your content is. Um, so I think that like Kenneth was talking about getting a vocabulary, getting a common understanding, but really thinking about what that, what the intentions are. And then our students are very um, media savvy. 
So uh, their, their expectations are going to be a certain, um, uh, you know, a length of video, a certain, uh, you know, process or interactivity, because that's what they're getting from other people. So um, we can definitely get there. Uh, I, I think AHEC is poised right now to, and they're, they're seeing the uh, need and the opportunity and creating the um, accessibility. So uh, yeah, we're putting all our heads together and doing this, we're going we're gonna to be leading the pack. Oral tradition is what we do, yeah. <laughs> that, that's great. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank, thanks, uh, all of you. Um, I, I guess the, vo the, vo the voting is in. We are going to do storyboarding, uh, templating and storyboarding next next workshop. Is that, uh, Moema, are we up for that? Uh, yes. Um, and I think that we also need to have in mind that the storyboard because sometimes the word storyboard for a lot of people, is, I, when I started, it scared me a lot because I don't draw realistically at all. So don't think of it as drawing or anything like that, having to have perfect images or like I said at the beginning, it can be like a, um, uh, like a bullet point. It can be, you can find image references online. You can, um like 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 this is we're focusing more on educational videos and content that uh their lessons so it's not so much as uh the shot needs to be perfect on this way it's more like i have this space this is how i'm gonna be creating this and um because it would be nice if everybody who who wants to participate could could come in with, let's say, I have a, a minute of this that I wanna talk about, just so we could also play around a little bit, get into it so we can do something too, like to start. What do you all think would be nice instead of just me? Because I think the storyboard and all of that depends a lot on what you are planning on showing. Like I was saying, if it is a, a fiction movie you show in a way if it's a documentary it's in another way if it is a lesson it's in another way so it depends a lot on that and I want to <laughs> be specific in helping in that way too so it would be nice to to have at least uh, an idea of of the kind of lessons and and ideas that you want to be showing and then we can I can go over different kinds of uh, storyboards and uh, how you from there how you use it to develop your project and then we can play around with it a little bit and from a pedagogical perspective the the less it is about edutainment and the more it is about um, the possible what we call the wabi-sabi or the imperfect in, impermanent and incomplete the more likely this the students will get engaged and you can actually ask the students to hand in video assignments and audio assignments and things of that nature it's it's a little daunting when they're faced with very perfect videos um, that makes it uh, a little scarier to actually participate in that way so uh, showing that uh, there, there isn't sort of this need to create a Disney quality video is actually often a good thing from a learning perspective. Hi, this is Nana from Haskell Indian Nation University. And um, what was nice, what you did, um, is it MoMA? Um, you know, you, you kind of start off talking about an outline and you talked about the storyboard, which is a framework. And just being able to, as people that are new, to have a framework, to be able to gather our thoughts, be able to then have something like Kenneth was saying is being able to then utilize our time. I'll have it, have it be more efficient. It's, that's kind of like, where can we, can we have some basic template, you know, like you're talking about so that we can understand like, cause if we just come in with all these ideas, I don't, I'll be honest, I'm new. I wouldn't not necessarily understand. I haven't worked with the framework. Like I need to work with the framework of what you're laying out. You showed it really quick. And I wasn't able to really right now in like three seconds, be able to translate that into my math, being a math professor. 
and how, but if you can, if we can look at the framework, if we can kind of dissect and like you're talking about pull different images and media, then I'm able to understand the framework and hopefully then be able to dive into then messing around with um, the technology and be a little bit more efficient and a little more um, probably comfortable is what I want to say. Because right now everything's really, I'm fearful of everything because there's, where do I even start? It's just all there. And, but it's like, but like you said, I, I'm, there's just so much. So I think having some type of framework and guide can then keep our mind and ourselves comfortable, but also hopefully deliver like what, um, I can't remember who just spoke, um, like she said, so that it can be um, hopefully beneficial to our students. So I think having that discussion of just the framework is, I, to me, it'd be helpful than trying to push it too fast when I still don't understand it and I'm still learning the language too. I agree with what she said. I'll need the framework to get started. And there was a, a request to show people the wiki and um, Moima, I, I don't know if you want to uh, quickly show, give a quick tour as to how people can join because that's where we can show the framework and the template and, and uh, the contacts and the resources. Okay, don't you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> you <did> so well. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let me just put on at the beginning of the page. Yeah. Let me share it. Okay. It's there? There it is. Okay. So yeah, this is the main page when you go in and uh, we do ask for everybody that comes in just to go here and sign up uh, so you can put your name and um, information so we know everybody who's participating. Uh, we will add more, uh, um, sorry, uh, spaces here uh, but you can also do that like everybody here can edit anything this is literally like a space for everybody to do anything and don't worry if uh, you do something that you think oh no I erased all the names or every anything you do we can go back to what it was before so play around with it it's all cool it's all great don't worry about uh, doing anything um so yeah so that's the first thing we ask uh here you can find the schedule for the workshops and what we've been uh doing so far um and future workshops uh then you, we go here in project ideas and collaborations and then you can find uh projects that we've been Kenneth has put up a, a whole bunch of things regarding his virtual commencement, including the planning and the the actual realization of the virtual commencement. Oh, let's take a look. <laughs> oh, awesome. This is great. Thanks, Kenneth. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. Yeah, and then anybody can also create, uh, you can come here and you can create your own project um and yeah and then everybody and it's open for collaboration and you can say please collaborate or i'm sharing or however you want to go with it uh you can do like this or you can um go here and go start from a template uh, for example uh, let's say projects template create and then it's going to show like this uh, then you can go and then put uh, all the information it comes already with suggestions of information but you can also just oh i don't want to put any resources uh, for example uh, but i'm not going to save this because Come 
anyone is, has the sound on and is typing, can you please uh, mute? Thank you. Um, yes. So then, uh, oh, right here, I changed it before I had uh, dates that I was available, but I realized nobody was uh, signing in and it was kind of hard to set up that way. I was concerned that nobody was signing in because of the times I put there. So I'm trying to make it different now. If you can contact me in either you put three different options times so I can try to coordinate with you like that or send me an email and then we can try to figure it out a time that would be, I think work better than I trying to put times and coordinate that way. Let's, let's try this way this time and see how it goes. Um, uh, am I forgetting anything? Oh, two. Uh, I think the the one first step would be if you use the sign up at the top and just simply put your email there and then you create you create a password for yourself. Once you've then logged in, you can hit edit on any of the pages to um, either add your name as a member or um, add resources and upload. You can upload files as well, uh, videos, uh, sound files, uh, etc. There is um, a, a bit of a cap on the video, but I think it sh we've increased that significantly, should, so there should be lots of storage space. There are files that are uploaded which you can download, so in the schedule um, there are uh, in the um, far corner, there may be some files that you can download. For example, the first PowerPoint file for the first workshop that we created that introduced the, the workshop series, you can download that and play it as well. And sorry, and now me, uh, you were going to show the tools and resources. Oh, no, and yeah. Examples. It's yeah. open uh, in another browser just so I can show what you're saying. You can go and sign up and then you fill out, oops, fill out this and once you fill out this you'll be able to then go and do everything that I was doing if you don't you just you're just able to look at it like like this you cannot edit anything you need to log in or sign up and in here I'm already uh, logged in so yeah so I can uh, go and do and so yeah and then here we have uh, tools and, uh, and resources that uh, for different things. Uh, and we would appreciate um, if people provide feedback once they've used the resources. So, you know, this worked, this didn't work, or this is out of date, or um, these are the bugs that I encountered, or uh, etc. And if you have resources to add to, that's great. Please. Uh, at there. Um, this, yeah, this is a work in progress. We are going to always be updating. Um, and Nana, I, you, you should start a math project in algebra and, and geometry, which I, I think there's probably many people who want to help. Yes, with thank you. And I have a question. My name is Angelina. If I put a project here or a lesson that I prepared, can I share it with my students? Like I used to share YouTube math videos and put it on my, my lessons. Yeah, you can um, share the, the YouTube videos there. You can uh, include the links. Or I can make my own. Yes, definitely. And, and uh, share it. Share, share this uh, wiki through with wiki with my students as well. Yep. Okay. Thank you. But, but I think part, part of that idea, the question is, can student, can you give the link to a resource that's here on the wiki to students just for them to access that resource, not to actually become, uh, you know, sign up, create an account and start working just as a, a vehicle for sharing uh, content. 
that that's yeah, not you actually do, you can do both um so and uh, many faculty might uh, actually employ students to help them in creating content as well mm -hmm. and so feel free to get your students to sign up to to help but yes it, without a sign up and a login you can view all of the content it's open um, so it is open to the world. It's not a publicized site. It's intended as sort of a, a working space for everyone in the TCU, but um, yeah, it, it isn't uh, in any way restricted uh, in terms of, so you can share the link with students. Oh, are you saying the students can also create their own on this page or share? Or? They, they could. Okay. It's not a learning management system. It was more of a, a working space, but okay. um, students could use it to help a, a faculty member to create content. Um, I, I think if you're going to use the, uh, the in, interactive video and media that you produce uh, as then probably a learning management system would be the best way to do that. And this this wiki and the way the content goes up in it plays very nicely with the learning management systems. You can either um, put a link in um, your Moodle or Canvas or uh, whatever learning management system you're using and it uh, link to here or uh, you can import and export from here. Thank you. And uh, I was just showing here too that you can add videos to it. And yeah, you press and it will play like that. This is look. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Any questions, comments? Oh, and here we put the meeting, huh? the meetings, oh no, the meetings go to the schedule, right? We put the recordings there, correct? Yes, we did, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, you guys see this Um. This is a hard question. What is the best video software, most accessible, user-friendly? Um, the uh, open source, you're asking, or uh, I, this was Iman Moore asked? Or, yeah. Um, so I was just kind of wondering um, if we, like as the college or as our college, if we wanted to purchase like some specific software um, for video making, like um, is it best to just use the kind that are already like on a PC or um, what would be like the wisest investment in video software, um, I guess, or what are the best programs to use to develop videos are most user friendly? Um, as in super easy to use, I mean. I would have to look into it a little bit and get back to you, but you're talking about for all the students and faculty or is the, the, the colleges in, in the institution like yeah, um, so right now a lot of our faculty are just kind of using um, Zoom to pre-record their lessons. So if, say, we wanted to move towards developing some online content where like the class is already developed and the videos are just available for use to plug in, what kind of um, video software like would or should we consider investing in that's going to be um, usable for people who have like zero technology skills to people who have really advanced technology skills. But if it's, if it's, uh, I, I know that probably everybody who makes videos probably has a preference for which they prefer or whatever. So, um, but if you have any like ideas on the different kinds that we could like maybe look a little more into that would be helpful too. 
I would look into something that could be more general, like for all levels. And also in the, we have a few already on the research tools too, here on the, on the wiki to take a look as well. In the, in the chat box, uh, Amber uh, mentions uh, Camtasia and uh, Edwin De mentions DaVinci Resolve. Mm -hmm. are, those, are those in that category of being fairly user-friendly, but you can do everything that you need to with them? I personally find Camtasia, um, it is user-friendly and it can be as simple or as complicated uh, as you want, but I, I just make PowerPoint slides with that. Mm. With my voice, you can do your voice well. You're going through the slides, or you can go, uh, do a voice over. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm still wanting to make my my lectures a little more exciting. I think with all the uh, software apps they have out there for phones and whatnots, um, it, it's to each their own. I used to teach this a long, long, long time ago. Um, and uh, basically, if you can get it into that WAV file, that's kind of all that matters. You just got to find the the um, Microsoft Word, a movie maker, iMac, whatever you need to edit those. And, and that goes the same with music, because in music, I record my bands and we, we uh, work on those. And it's usually the every student will have a different app. Um, my daughter has a different app she uses. And as long as they get done with what they need to, they can always uh, save it in that WAV file. And it's, it's pretty much universal after that. Audacity that you showed, Moema, um, is a really good one. And it's, adult, it's either for Mac or Windows. And I love that one. And the kids find it very easy to use. Which one? Audacity. Oh, Audacity. Okay. Yeah, I use, I, uh, uh, Ryugito was asking, yes, I, I use Adobe Creative Cloud. Yeah, I use Premiere. And it's, it's a, it, for me, it's very good because I use other uh, products as well and they communicate very well together. Uh, but again, it all depends on how what you're doing and how much uh, uh, how how much you need to communicate uh, the programs to communicate and it is to edit on the premiere uh, it's it looks scary at first but uh, it's very intuitive they make it very like intuitive and um, user friendly uh, it just it's just that. Adobe, you have to it's you have to pay, and there's so many other uh, free, um, uh, like open source out there. They are similar, in a way. Like the the structure, it's very similar. I think that there might be other options that it, it doesn't have to be if it's, if you're just using for for editing videos. If you if you don't need all the communications for other, like. Um, like I use Photoshop or in design and all of that. If it's just more for one thing, I don't know if it, if it's needed. It depends. That's why I was asking if it's what if it was something for the whole colleges. Like if the marketing department was also going to use, or if it was just uh, for the students. It, it depends how how you want to invest in it. That's why I was. We have the uh, your uh, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. We I teach that at our institution. Oh, how do you like it? Uh, you know, um, I'm I started working on it probably when everybody was in grade school back in '96 at the university, and that's what my my graduate work was on was Adobe. I love it. <laughs> Early I've, been, I've been there since 1999, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the preference often is where you started. So Audacity is often used in music and in audio recording because the 
audio editing is very good and you can create multiple voices and um, superimpose them on each other and uh, coordinate the, the musical parts, etc. So somebody might have started with music recording and then would prefer audacity. Often it's what what your preference is and what your background is. We started with our studio uh, in 2011. Um, we started using Final Cut Pro and then uh, we had, um, I'm trying to think what we used in the audio studio, but now we're going to Creative Cloud. Uh, we just made that shift this last year because um, the institution then has a, an account and we're able to kind of get students um, who are in the classes access easier through that Creative Cloud so that everyone's on the same page. Um, in between then and then we were using, um, because our IT guy was an Apple guy, so we were using GarageBand and uh, iMovie and those kind of entry level stuff for the students, but uh, in order to move forward, it was hard for them to make that jump to Final Cut Pro, <laughs> you know, like there was, that's a big leap. Um, and so we were kind of like haphazardly uh, choosing different softwares, but there, there are many options. It's kind of like kind of like being multilingual a little bit, you know, uh, and, and working in each one and especially if you're teaching it. But um, like Shannon was saying earlier, uh, you know, whatever works for you, like they're all doing basically the same thing. Uh, it's just getting in there and what you're comfortable, you know, uh, doing and, and moving around and navigating. Okay, very good. Um, I think we're we're about out of time, a little bit actually over time. And yeah. th does anybody have any more uh, final questions or comments? I think we're all set for next week being a storyboarding and templating uh, workshop. Um, so uh, I think it's been, this was a great session. Thanks everybody very much. Uh, thank you very much for for uh, for all your input, the discussion. This is really, really uh, helpful. Um, and thanks, Wama, definitely. Uh, do you have anything to sign in or sign out? Um, to, to, to sign in and sign out to Dorothy? Are you there still? I think it was regarding the wiki. You don't necessarily need to sign out. You will time out. Um, if oh, you okay. Do anything. Yeah, I was just wondering for this session. Page too. I'm sorry. I was wondering for the session, do we have to register and then sign off again like last week or? No, not, not for this session. Okay. You don't have to. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. I opened really early like 11.30 and it says uh, this meeting was scheduled on April 4th. Oh. And, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so I sent an email to you, but it did not go to your email, but somebody um, um, sent an email back to me and I just came back and I was late. So do I need to sign in? No, not really. No, no. Yeah, that's... Uh, I I'm using the same Zoom link from that first meeting uh, in April, uh, and I guess that's why that that's coming up. Maybe I can fix that. But it seemed like instead of having a new invitation every week, I guess I could have set up a recurring meeting every week. Uh, then that way it would always be the same. Uh, uh, let me let me see if I can fix that so there won't be any confusion uh, from here on. Okay, but I was able to catch up though. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> good. So uh, again, unless there's any final comments, I think we're good for today. And again, I think it's a great session. I'm looking forward to next week. Well, what time is next week's class? Oh, it's always the same. Uh, these workshops are always going to be 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern on Tuesday. Yeah. Until people say, no, no, that's not a good day. We got to move it. Uh, it's, okay. Uh, and it's always the same. Uh, Zoom link. Same, yeah, because uh, Shana is asking about how can be to the Zoom meeting, but it's always the same Zoom link and and yeah. time and place. And we've put the Zoom link on the wiki. It's right in the front page there. So if you have the wiki link, then you can get yeah. the Zoom link. So I'm on Central Time, so I just now got on at 3. Do I get on? What time do I get on? 
Oh, central. Two. Yeah, two. It's two for you. Two. Oh my yeah. gosh. Okay. Sorry about that. I, I guess I didn't make that clear in the email. I will fix that also. Yes. I think we've had Thank enough you. confusion for one week. Uh, and the recordings for the previous workshops are in the uh, wiki where we say uh, workshop schedule. And Al, I, I think you uh, need to upload a few more there. I, I think I'm behind. I don't have last week's. I don't think I have the one before either. So I, I have some catching up to do. I have, I have four task assignments before next, uh, <laughs> for the next day or two. Okay. Yes. Yeah, great. <laughs> okay, well again, thanks everybody very much. This was great. I'm really uh, very pleased on how things are developing. Thank you too. Thank you and see you. Have a great rest of the week and okay. see you next Tuesday. Thank you. Safe everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.